What is up guys? <laughs> Welcome back. My voice has dropped like an octave. I'm acutely aware of how, how sassy I sound. Don't adjust your devices. <laughs> this is actually how my voice sounds. <laughs> it's gonna sound like I'm at the wrong frame rate. So anyway guys, today we are playing with Shantikai for the first time ever on my channel. This is something that has been requested since, God, like 2019, when we started doing Clean Routine 2019, a lot of people were like, why have you never reviewed this, you know, clean, beauty, cruelty-free brand? It's like this luxury brand. It seems like squarely in the middle of what I would be interested in. Honestly, the thing that kept me from reviewing it was just A, I had no idea which products to start with, and B, the price. There are so many luxury brands out there where I'm like, oh, well, this is their star product. This is their hero product. I'm going to try that and review it. Shantikai, it's like every, they have a huge, huge selection and it's all really expensive and it all is like really well reviewed. So I kind of waited until they put out something that people were sort of requesting one specific product that I review. And they recently came out with their Future Skin Cushion Skincare Foundation. So I did buy that, it was like $128, but it does come with uh, another cushion. I'm gonna compare this to some of the other like low, low coverage skin tints that I have as well as other cushion foundations that I have. I think I only have one, but uh, I also picked up a few more things. I got this, this is the Le Camouflage Stylo Anti-Fatigue Corrector Pen. It's kind of a, you know, YSL Touche Cla kind of low coverage brightener situation. I got a gigantic thing of their Cheek Gelée. This is their like, you know, liquid blush. Then I got a mermaid eye color in the shade Starfish, which is kind of a, like a plummy mauve. And then finally I got their Lip Chic in the shade Hyssop, which again is like another mauve shade. I figured if I was going to compose a look, I wanted to try and stay in the same color families. And uh, I, I actually have already put all this stuff on before. I really liked the way that it came together. But I am also very aware that anybody approaching spending this much money on makeup really wants to see exactly how it behaves and whether or not they're going to like it. So I'm going to move you all in good and close. We're going to get some detail and I'm going to apply all of these things. We will discuss like we always do the claims on it, the prices, the shades, ranges and stuff like that and then I will close with my final thoughts. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okie dokie artichokies. <laughs> I kind of want to just have fun with this weird voice that I have like for a while. <laughs> I don't know I feel like I need to just like be extra silly with it. Anyway I picked up the shade Alabaster and it looks like this when you open it up. Got a nice little cushion in there. I am going to be using this cushion today. Sometimes I will go in with a sponge on a cushion, but this is actually like a really, really nice, super soft texture. I like it very much. So that's what it looks like when you open it up and you get 0.42 ounces of product in one of the cushions. And like I said, it comes with a replacement cushion. So I've already got my sunscreen on and I just want to show this to you. I mean, obviously I want to show this to you guys, but I want to make sure that we really see a contrast here in, um, in the coverage. So I'm only going to put this on one half of my face to start with. It feels really nice and cool when you're putting it on. And I am really dipping that sponge in. Trying to pick up as much product as I can. Gonna try and build it up for a little bit of coverage on top of my indiscretions here. I started using my light stem again and just really toasting <laughs> my, my breakouts. Man, that thing, I always forget how amazingly effective it is. Like this thing just like dried up overnight. Very impressed. So, we are talking very little coverage here, guys. 
very little coverage. We're talking like camouflage. <laughs> that is the bare minimum uh, of coverage to me. I would say on a scale, on my arbitrary scale of zero to 10, it is a 0.5 <laughs> in terms of coverage. And you do get a little bit of buildability out of it. I know that that's exactly what they were going for. And I definitely um, came into it with those expectations that this was going to be very much just like a texture on the skin, just like a really pretty poor blurring enhancing thing, not so much, you know, a, a foundation, quote unquote, even though they do call it a foundation. But I can't emphasize enough, you know, <laughs> how someone who thinks that maybe <laughs> the money that they spend should equal the amount of coverage that they get would be quite disappointed by this. But anybody else who is really just looking for a luxurious experience and looking for a very no makeup makeup, respecting your skin kind of feeling, you know? I always say like, what would your day look like if you woke up and decided that everything that you did that day was to honor you? Like, what does that look like? And I, you know, function as much as I possibly can by the pleasure principle of what can I do to like really max out my my existence in terms of like enjoyment. And I don't really know how to articulate why this is just such a lovely pampering kind of experience. I think that there is something psychological to spending this much money on makeup where you're like, well, I really hope that it feels luxurious, but you guys know, I've said this a million times, I don't mind paying for a luxury experience if I get a luxury experience. And there is something very self-care about not just applying that makeup, but about the way that it looks. There's something about it where it says, I want my skin to look like my skin in a way that people might actually mistake it for my skin, <laughs> you know? And uh, it's it's kind of like a luxurious version of the um, Glossier skin tint, but it's even lighter than that and even more blurring than that. And it does kind of have a little bit of a dry down. And we will get into it a little bit, but their ingredients are also very, I mean, if that's the kind of thing that matters to you, you know, they're very botanical and um, they make a big deal about like the skincare promises of their products too. We just do that. Boop. Just a little a little moment. The whole thing is just a moment. So that's the whole that's the whole foundation situation for the future skin cushion. Like I said, this could be just as likely to be perceived as like the most absurd thing in the world or exactly <laughs> what you were hoping for. So I just hope that um, I'm communicating the reality of it as best as I can. So let's go in with the Le Camouflage Stylo. And this is one of those brush applicators. Kind of looks like that. And it is brightening and low coverage basically. But you guys saw I am not working with an absolutely perfect canvas as many of us are not. I'm breaking out quite a bit. This texture up here kind of absent-mindedly grabs my attention. I will um, reach my, uh, my hand up there kind of while I'm not paying attention and just feel that texture and just sort of run my nails across it and it will turn red and none of it is like benefiting from that, that ritual. So, you know, I'm just trying to <clears throat> resist that but also clear it as quickly as I can back in the routine of caring for my acne. But we do end up with a, a like really nice camouflaged situation where, you know, you're saying this is probably in terms of coverage, like a three, a three or a four. And it's just adding a little blur. And again, I would compare this almost to the Glossier Stretch Concealer, except it's lighter weight. It's a lot less emollient. It's a lot less shiny on the skin and it does have more of its own dry down. And the way that it blends so easily 
texturally into your skin makes it very easy to apply quickly, blend quickly, and you don't feel like you have to then apply a whole bunch of other stuff to kind of bring your face back. That's what happens when you go full coverage, especially when you're trying to cover blemishes, is you end up a lot of times with everything really blanked out and then you don't really recognize yourself or you have to do a lot of work to sort of bring back the contours of your face. This very much preserves all of the integrity of the contours of my face while just generally improving it. And I did used to be very cynical about these kinds of makeup items, like, wow, am I really gonna pay this much money for something that does so little? But it's kind of a less is more mentality and it is actually kind of harder to formulate those kinds of products in my opinion. Alrighty. Let's move into one of my favorite products. Honestly, I do really enjoy all of these for what they are, but this doesn't feel overpriced at all because you get almost an entire ounce. You get 0.8 ounces of blush. <laughs> like a foundation and it's uh it's $45 so yes it's still a luxury price point but like that's that's a lot of blush like good luck getting through that much blush so I bought it in the shade does it not say the shade it can't be called vibrant right the shades the shade might be called vibrant I'm not sure but it's uh, an iridescent raspberry kind of color and it spreads out really beautifully with fingers but I am probably going to go in with a brush just because I like having that amount of control. And the texture on the foundation really stays put. I think that that's the other thing that it does really well compared to something like the Glossier Skin Tint is that it does have its own dry down and it really becomes kind of one with your skin. So it feels like it's gonna have more wear time. And as I have worn this over time, like, you know, in the last few days and stuff, I have just found that um, my skin stays that beautiful enhanced texture, that lit from within kind of texture for a really, really long time. And it's just so nice and blurred. And to me, it, it really is just about making it look like it, you know, that's how your skin looks. Not so much like you're wearing makeup. I don't mind looking like I'm wearing makeup either, but something about the actual finish, you know, you kind of expect cushion foundations a lot of times to have more um, of like a bouncy texture to them. And this still manages to have a satin texture to it um, that mimics skin in a really beautiful way that isn't at all mattifying. And I don't, I don't really know how they did that. It's really, really incredible. It always looks like too much blush and then we end up putting more on later. So just bear with me. But look at how my freckles kind of show through. This is honestly like the color of my baby's cheeks. <laughs> I sent some pictures to some friends the other night uh, of him when he got home and he was playing and his cheeks were so cute and rosy. And my friend was like, <laughs> What blush is he wearing? I was like, he won't tell me, but I think it was this. <laughs> okay, so we have this mermaid eye color. I think I was hoping that this was going to be creamy and it isn't. It is very much a, just a powder, but it's like a really, it's like a really soft velvety powder, but it is not like wet at all. And that is what that looks like. You know, very even pigmentation, a really, really pretty mauvey brown color. And I have kind of put this on with my fingers. I've used brushes. I think I'm going to kind of do both here. I'm gonna start with it on my lids, go for something as simple as I can here. Because I think that the idea of this is that it's fast fast, low maintenance, you're doing more with less, fewer better things mentality. And it spreads out in such a really pretty way. Like you can build that up and make something really rich with it, but it also spreads out almost like a cream shadow once you get it on. So I'm just taking a brush and blending that out. Looks really nice with brown eyes, I think. I mean, I did stay very much within my comfort zone as far as these shades are concerned. If I was gonna spend this much money, I was not going to be experimenting, you know? <laughs> I was like, I know that a raspberry shade is gonna look nice on my cheeks. I know that a plummy shade is gonna look nice on my eyes. And I know that a mauve is gonna look really good on my lips, so. I would compare this to the 
eye soots, not uh, from Ritual Defeat, not the ones that are liquidy. They have ones that are kind of liquidy and sticky, but the other ones that are just regular eyeshadows. But you guys know I have been frustrated by those in the past because it's like the most tantalizing formula. It's the most beautiful eyeshadow formula, except it's impossible to actually get it out of the container. It's like this very pretty aesthetic container that is so impractical. <laughs> And they're very expensive. I think that they might be more expensive even than this. I'm not sure. But um, if you are a fan of that formula, this is super, super similar. It has that lovely shine and buildability, but it's much easier to get it out of the package. <laughs> So yeah, I basically only used one shade and I just built it up in the crease and then thinned it out on the lid. I'm gonna go with whatever I have left on the brush underneath. And that truly is a one and done because it does have so much versatility in terms of coverage and saturation that you can get from it. And there's something really beautiful and like subtle but also dramatic about that color. You know, it looks kind of native to my skin tone, but at the same time, it doesn't look like, it, I mean, it looks like I'm wearing makeup, you know? It does have a little bit of drama to it. I think it's very pretty and it's not so shiny that it is like distorting the crease. I feel like it enhances the, um, the, the shadow and light of my sockets naturally. It's very easy to go in and clean something like this up too, just because it's all this very lightweight cream, so. If I want to add a little more coverage here and there with that little camouflage pen, I can. All right, I'm going to do a little bit of eyeliner, probably a tiny bit of like a highlight on my inner corner of my brow bone, some brows, some mascara, and we'll come back and talk about lips. Lips. <laughs> so much base. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just used the Wayne Goss highlighter from the Coral Rose blush palette on my inner corner and just a little bit on my brow bone and just regular eyeliner, mascara, a little bit of brow mousse. And I really feel like it just, you know, defined the lines, brought it together. And now we're going to go in with some lips. I'm gonna put this on first and then I'll go in with some lip liner so as you guys can see what it looks like on its own. So again, I got it in the shade Hissop. Hyssop, H-Y-S-S-O-P. I think it's a flower and uh, it is the Lip Chic. Oh, it smells like vanilla. Mm. Ooh, it's the loveliest texture. It's balmy, but it's very pigmented. It's really smooth. Feels really nourishing. A lovely color, an absolutely lovely color. Very, somewhere in between mauve and berry. Hmm. But yeah, I do like to uh, see what it looks like with a little bit of lip liner. Yeah, blotted mm, with a little bit of lip liner. Oh yeah. I am going to do just a teeny bit more blush, just the tiniest little bit, right on kind of the tops of my cheeks and the iridescence really doesn't read on the skin like it does have a pearlescence to it but no glitter and i just feel like all it does is enhance the texture of your skin not leave some kind of like highlight effect you know okay i'm gonna move y'all out and we are going to chat all about the brand because it is brand new to my channel <laughs> Okay, so Future Skin Cushion Skincare Foundation. This is, as I said, $128. You get 0.42 ounces, and I believe that you get 0.42 ounces in each of the cushions, I think. And I actually got the second fairest shade. So I got Alabaster. They do make one that is cooler and fairer called Aura. And it also comes in, well, a total of eight shades that go all the way to Espresso, which is a very, very deep brown. But again, you guys, we are talking about so light of coverage. It is more about camouflaging and enhancing and adding a really, really 
like better than real life texture to your skin than it is about, you know, coverage. And after we talk about this, I will show it to you against the typology as well as the like M Cosmetics cushion, just so that you guys can see. A fresh water-based foundation formula with smoothing and anti-pollution skincare ingredients that blur imperfections and leave skin looking flawless, lightweight and instantly perfecting. The refillable soft cushion compact makes build building coverage beautifully simple. Apply with a puff for a natural fresh finish or apply with your fingers for even more ease. Every cushion feeds an orphan baby elephant. <laughs> Y'all had me at that. Rescued by the Sheldrick Wildlife Trust. One cushion equals one bottle of milk formula. <laughs> Each compact contains one inserted cushion and one refill. What makes this formula so unique is its flexibility. One shade has the versatility to work with multiple skin tones, making it our most inclusive foundation to date. It's actually funny because um, that's like exactly what the typology says. And you know, they are very, very similar in their lightness of coverage. So it's not that surprising, but it is interesting that a lot of these clean beauty companies, the way that they are combining the inclusivity mission with the clean beauty aesthetic is by creating extremely low coverage foundations. It does aim to solve the issue of trying to track down every single undertone because, at the, you know, I could wear the first probably two or three shades in this and that probably goes for a lot of people. So no animal testing, no parabens, fragrance-free, phthalate-free, gluten-free, and vegan. And, you know, Shantikai is very eco-conscious, earth-conscious, ingredient-conscious. I will take a moment to talk about that after uh, we talk about each of these products. So they also send like deluxe samples of skincare with every order. So I have gotten a chance to try a couple of their little skincare items. You know, jury's still out, but they're very pretty. Lip Chic is $48, fam. That's a lot for a lipstick, okay? That's a lot. And they also, I mean, they have a lot of stuff that I didn't try and I know that's what the comments are going to be filled with and God bless all of you because um, I really appreciate your recommendation. And Shantikai, I can already feel the addictive quality of just how subtle and delicate and thought out these products are that it does make me curious to try more things. They have a lot of powder products. I stayed in the cream category, but I would be interested to try those as well. The Le Camouflage Stylo is $55. They have a gloss that of course I wanna try. Of course I wanna try that, it's a gloss. The Mermaid Eye Matte is uh, $35. Did I get the matte one? No, I didn't. I got the Mermaid Eye like shimmery guy, right? Either way, it's $35, which is about what you pay for something this size from Hourglass or Charlotte Tilbury. Tom Ford, I think, is even more expensive than this. So I think that this is right in the middle of your prestige single pan, like one and done eyeshadow formulas. And it is, I mean, I don't know pound for pound, but that's about the price of uh, the eye soot as well. And I would be willing to bet you get less in the eye soot. Yeah, and the Cheek Gelé is $45. And like I said, you get a you get a lot of product. So um, some of their stuff is, I think, you know, pretty overpriced. Um, not necessarily like, oh, it's not worth that, but it's a little bit like sticker shock-y <laughs> when you look at it. But then there's stuff like these two things that are just, I mean, this is an abundance of product for that much money and it's a very pretty blush and this is very much just right within the price point that we do not bulk at necessarily when we're talking about a lot of the brands at Sephora. They also do customizable palettes which is something that you know while still a huge investment when we're talking about Shantikai still means that you are spending money on stuff ostensibly you're going to use all of the shades in which you know is a better use of your money a lot of times than buying a pre-made palette. So Shantikai is beauty with impact. It says what began as founder Sylvie Shantikai's passion has blossomed into a 20 year long commitment to environmental philanthropy. Sylvie's love of gardening led her to discover the crisis of disappearing monarch butterflies and the creation of our first philanthropy partnership. Since then, our philanthropy collections have helped raise awareness for endangered sea turtles, coral reefs, gorillas, wolves, bees, elephants, giraffes, and more. We are proud to give a voice to these urgent environmental causes. So, I mean, if you're going to make beautiful makeup and make it very expensive, 
at least I know that some of my money is going to a good cause in ways that I didn't even really think about. So uh, it's kind of like Thrive Cosmetics to me. Yes, the price point is a little bit higher, but just knowing that there is that philanthropy angle to it, and it's not like they're skimping on the quality of the formula either. It's just about whether it's what you want for that money. So this is the vibe. I still feel so weird. Like my voice doesn't sound like my voice leaving my mouth right now. And so I think that that's why I'm kind of talking I don't know, I'm speaking softly. I'm just like, I feel like I'm thundering off the walls right now. But this is the look I was able to achieve. And I posted it on Instagram earlier this week when I put all this same face of makeup on. And I said, this was such a fun face of makeup to put on. I wish it had taken longer <laughs> because it was so straightforward and so simple and easy, but it was such a pleasure that I just, I wanted to do it again. I wanted to just keep putting more on. And you guys know, I always say bottom line, regardless of price point, makeup, needs to be fun and it needs to be easy. And Shantika is not backing away from a high price point, but I cannot deny that this was really fun and really easy to put on. And it just makes me feel really, really pretty. There is, there is something to be said for interacting with beautiful products and feeling like in a way that's honoring you that day and that never gets old to me. And I also think that a lot of times we end up paying a lot of money for products that are very professional quality, which is totally fine, but there tends to be a little bit more of a learning curve to them. These are beginner friendly products. This is easy. It's just, it's very, very simple, straightforward makeup that gives you results that you don't really have to worry about. It's going to wear beautifully all day. It's going to wear the same way every time you put it on. And even though, like I said, I wasn't working with an ideal canvas, like I said, I have been struggling with some acne, struggling with some picking. I've got a lot of dullness going on because I'm sick and I'm not bagging on myself. I'm just kind of giving credit where credit is due in terms of a low coverage makeup like this being something that can still accomplish so much in terms of making me feel really pretty and flawless without a lot of coverage. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead and swatch this against a few other things. Uh, bear with me guys. I mean, obviously they're going to be hard to see because they're all ideally, you know, supposed to be the same color as my skin. So um, here you have the Typology Paris. That's going to be very, very light coverage. Here is the M Cosmetics. This is her, what is this called? The Daydream Cushion. And it is a little bit more coverage, probably the most coverage out of the, uh, the four swatches that you see here. This is the Glossier Skin Tint in G11, and it's just very shiny. It does have silicone in it, so it dries down to some extent, but it is designed to look kind of shiny on the skin. And then that right there is the Chantecaille. And you can see the biggest difference is the texture, the way that it blurs and is more satin finish than all the rest of them. And I did make an attempt at least to, you know, spread them out so that they have the opportunity to soak into my skin and dry down a little bit. But the Chantecaille is the one that's the most eager to just blur and blend in and soak in, whereas the others are very, very beautiful. Don't get me wrong, they're just different. And I think that anybody who is going into this foundation with the expectation that it's going to be very, very low coverage, but it's going to give you perfected skin that looks like your skin, you're going to be very happy with it. If you're going into it with the expectations of like a K-beauty kind of cushion foundation where you are going to get good buildable coverage, you cover your blemishes, cover your freckles kind of thing, this isn't going to do that. The, there's no amount of this that you could put on that would completely give you, you know, freckle coverage and stuff like that. It is very much about enhancing your skin while letting your skin show through in its entirety practically. I do, I want to re-emphasize the fact that out of like a zero to 10, this is like a 0.5 in terms of coverage. But I do think that the Le Stylo, the camouflaging little you know highlighter stick helped me a lot. I think it's really beautiful. I think that this eyeshadow shade specifically, again, I got the shade Starfish is just it's one and done heaven for me. Like it's so beautiful. And um, as far as this cheek gelée is concerned, this is again, more blush than I've gotten for my money in a lot of other cases. So I don't necessarily think that this one is like gouging anybody at all. And it's super, super beautiful. I will definitely keep this front and center top of mind. And this lip is awesome. I would actually, compare this very much in texture and in smell and everything to 
the one from beauty counter you know that just like lightweight balmy has you know a good amount or the the one from um, rare beauty too the one from rare beauty is not quite as shiny but it's very very similar in that respect so this can be had for less money <laughs> i would recommend the rare beauty one if this is not something that you know you feel like spending that kind of money on but as far as the shade is concerned as far as the formula is concerned like i'm not mad that i own that that's an incredibly beautiful color very easy to wear and i could also wear that on my cheeks no problem so you guys warned me okay you guys warned me that once i got started on shantikai Every time I say Chanticleer, I just think of like Rockadoodle, like Chanticleer. Um, anyway, you guys warned me that I was going to get hooked and I'm, I'm for sure hooked and I really appreciate the quality of these products. I really appreciate the ingenuity of them and also the subtlety of them. You guys might think I'm crazy. I love a luxury experience. This gave me a luxury experience and I'm going to continue using it. But I also think that like, if this isn't your price point, the Typology Paris is probably going to give you something very similar. I think you'd be just as happy with it. Um, it just doesn't give you that blurred like satin finish it's going to give you a little bit more of like a bouncy dewy finish but we're also talking like a fifth of the price so um do without what you will i am glad that i own these products but i totally understand that it's not everybody's thing thank you for indulging me in some luxury beauty today trying to you know balance it out on my channel treat myself here and there but uh i love this look it makes me really happy i hope you guys enjoyed this if you did give it a thumbs up if you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel hit the button down below and subscribe i would love it if you guys did thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today i love you so much and i will see you in the next one bye guys <laughs>